Okay, let's uh, do a little bit more work with polynomials. Uh, these are things that uh, you're working with these all the time, of course, in a variety of situations. And there's one little extra skill that you might not have come across that, uh, that you need to, to just check out. Uh, when you're doing basic uh, multiplying out, let's have a look at an example that we might be asked to do. So there we have a linear bracket multiplied by a quadratic bracket. The rules of expanding brackets, the distributive laws, are very simple. You take each term from each bracket and multiply them together. So that is multiplying that, that, and that. And then the plus 1 multiplies that, that, and that. And mentally, you should be saying, how many terms do I expect to get? So here, you expect to get six. So we've got three yellow terms and three pink terms. So in this case, then, 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed. 2x times minus 5x is minus 10x squared. 2x times minus 7 is minus 14x. Then looking at the pink terms, plus 1 times everything is nice and easy. Plus 1 times 3x squared, plus 1 times minus 5x, plus 1 times minus 7. Now this sort of work will crop up all over the place whenever you're doing uh, a whole range of questions. You should get into good habits. And the first good habit is always to simplify as you go along. Now, some people will try to be not that systematic when they're doing this. The way I would do this, I would always start with the highest power and I would tick to indicate that I'd taken that term. So then negative 10x squared plus 3x squared is minus 7x squared. And notice it, that, that little tick, it does make it clearer. Take 14x, take 5x is minus 19x. And then it tells you you've done everything. There's nothing else to worry about except for the minus 7. And so we've now expanded that bracket, and that's the answer. So all the time you'll be asked to do this, this type of thing. A much more useful skill, rather than just the basic skill of this, is a concept called comparing coefficients. So let's have a look at a question like this. I need to be careful how I copy this down so that we get it right. x plus p times 2x squared minus hx plus 5. And on the other side, I'm actually going to be told the answer. 2x cubed plus x squared minus qx and plus 10. Find uh, p, q, and h. Now, notice this has a three-line equal sign. Now, strictly speaking, that should have a three-line equal sign as well, but I mean, most of us never bother, really, but uh, it's very lazy because the three-line equal sign actually tells you just a little bit more uh, important uh, information than the two-line equal sign because the three-line 
says that that side is identically equal to that. In other words, it's the same thing written in a completely different way. If we have an equal sign, strictly speaking, it means solve it. So if, if, if you were given this equals that, it, it's sort of saying to you, I want you to solve it to find x. But we've got the three lines here, so all this is telling us is that that side is exactly the same as that. And that's very important uh, in this method of comparing coefficients. Now, to be on the safe side, I would multiply that out. So I would have 2x cubed minus hx squared plus 5x. Then I'd have plus 2px squared minus phx plus 5p. Now this is where people get a little bit of a, a muddle. I haven't done any of this grouping yet, this ticking. I'm going to do that because I need to do that. So there's only one x cubed, so it's 2x cubed. Now be careful with the x squared. There's a minus h and there's a plus 2p. So I'm going to write that as 2p minus h x squared. Then there's a 5x and there's a minus phx. So there's a 5 minus phx. Finally, there's a 5p. And all of this is the same, not equal, the same as that. So, what does the same mean? Well, the same strictly means that whatever value of x I put into each side, I'll get the same answer. That's what, that's what it really means. But it also means it's got to look the same. Well, 2x cubed, 2x cubed, so that's OK. Now, the next bit, there's 1x squared here. But how many x squareds are there here? There appear to be 2p minus h, but I'm saying it's the same. So 2p minus h has got to equal 1. Similarly, I am saying that 5 minus ph is the number of x's here. How many x's are there here? Minus q. And finally, the number on the end is 5p. The number on the end is 10. So I have a set of simultaneous equations. Now in this type of topic, the equations may look a little bit tricky. But there's always a way of finding one of the variables quite easily at, at this level. They're not going to give you anything that, that's really hard. And of course, you can see here straight away that p equals 2. OK, well, if p is 2, I can go to there, and I get 4 take away h equals 1. So h equals 3. And then I can go to here and I get 5, take away pH, which is 6, equals minus Q. So Q is also equal to 1. So P, Q and H are 2, 1 and 3. And that, in essence, is the nature of this comparing coefficients method. So you have to identify things that on each side are the same. And it's all to do with the coefficients, the numbers in front of the powers of x. And it's a fairly powerful, fairly powerful method.
But remember, this could crop up in all sorts of places um, and it might not necessarily be called this is a question on polynomials, okay? So you have to be uh, ready to pick this up. Okay, Mary, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done. Well done.